there's one more topic I do want to cover before finishing this section, and that is flow and line breaks. So far, we always wrote code with a colon and then with an indentation on the next line. You don't have to do that. You could just write straight after the colon. For example, for a for loop, instead of the line break after the colon and the indentation here, you could simply continue writing the print statement here. This would also work with an if statement. It would also work with a while loop. As a matter of fact, you could even use a semicolon to add multiple lines of code. All of these here would be counted as indented. Python is totally fine with that. That being said, most of the time you do want to indent your code because having multiple lines is easier to read. But that's not always the case. Sometimes if you have a very simple statement, it might make more sense to have it on the same line. For example, match case very often has each case on an individual line without a line break between the case and the actual code. Because the idea here is each case should be fairly simple. We're going to have a look at that in a second. But much more important, for the if statement, Python does have a special operation here to have a one line if statement. And this is called a ternary operator. This one works like this. Let's say we have x equals 5 and we want to check something like if the value is below 5, we want color equals blue and else the color should be red. A really simple if statement. The problem is that we have four lines of code for something that really is very simple. We could make this more space efficient by skipping the line break here. This way we only have two lines. And this, I think, is more readable, but this may be debatable here. However, there's an even more efficient way of doing all of this. And this would look like this. This, by the way, is called a ternary operator. This entire line would be this bit here. Then we have the if statement as always, but now the if statement, this bit here, with the condition, is this part here from the original if statement. We also have an else and then we have the else condition. So this red here would be assigned to the color if the condition, this one here, was false. And the way you would understand this ternary statement here is if you read it like a sentence. I want the color blue if the value of x is below 5. If that is not the case, so else, I want the color red. And that way, if you have a simple if statement, you can cover all of this on a single line of code. Once again, we have a completely empty Python file. And I want to start with the match case statement. And here is the exercise we have done earlier. If you see this now with the understanding that we don't have to do these line breaks, I think all of this starts to make a whole lot more sense. This one, we could write like this. Let me get rid of all of the line breaks. This here is something incredibly readable, especially if you have some kind of statement where you would expect a lot of specific values you want to check for. This would be a very readable way to organize all of it. Although granted, using if else statement wouldn't look all that different. The much more important operator is the ternary operator. And let me comment out the match case stuff because we don't need it. The example I've used earlier was x equal 5. From this value, I want to assign some kind of color. And in here, you first of all need the value, in my case red, if the condition you want to check for is true. I want to have red if the value of x is, I think, smaller than 5, I said. Doesn't really matter what it is. If that is not the case, so else, I want to assign a different value, which in my case is blue. And that is all we need. If I now print my color, run this, we are getting blue because 5 is, well, this condition here is false. But if I change x to 1, run this again, we are getting red. And this way, if you have a very simple if statement, you can cover it on a single line. I guess let me go over this a bit more theoretically. A ternary operator always looks like this. We have a true 
value if an expression results in true. If the expression is false, let me add a cross here, then we are getting the else value, so the false value. And then either the true or the false value will be assigned to whatever kind of variable we are assigning all of this to. That way you can cover an if statement on a single line of code. And this is really readable and very efficient if you have a simple if statement. If the if statement gets more complex, obviously you want to use a normal if statement, the ones we have already seen. I guess one thing I haven't covered yet is that this sort of operation here, this ternary operator works in a lot of different tools as well. For example, you can use it inside of an f string or when you are creating a list. Let's have a look at those two examples. Let me get rid of this print statement and instead I want to print an f string. And in here, I want to write something like the color is, and then I want to have an operation. And in here, I could copy this entire thing instead of the variable and it would still work. So I can copy it, although there's one thing that we do have to take care of. And that is that right now, the quotation signs are going to confuse Python. So it doesn't know where the string ends and where it begins. The way around it is to use double quotation marks at the end and at the start. And this should be working now. Let's try it. And there we go. The color is red. And in here we have a fairly complex statement inside of a string. This way we don't have to assign variables before or after. We can keep everything nice and neat inside of one line. Finally, we could also do something like a is equal to some kind of value in the list. And in here, I could once again copy all of this, paste it inside of the list, and then have some other values like, I don't know, yellow and green. If I now print the entire list, we are getting red, yellow, and green. All I really want you guys to take away from this is that this sort of operation works basically anywhere in Python. You could also put it inside of a function or a method Python really doesn't mind. And this can give you a ton of power and avoid you having to write extra code that you wouldn't need.